Hey folks, it's Martin. Today we're going to dial things back a little bit. We're going to make the easiest loaf of bread you'll ever bake. If you've never made bread before, start here. Okay, so let's mix this bread. Today, I'm measuring the ingredients using cup measures. It's what most of us have. It's what I grew up with. As a professional, I tend to use a scale predominantly, but today, we're gonna to use cup measures because I think that's what everybody has, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the most accurate way possible. Most people, when they go to measure flour, what they do is they take their cup measure and they go into the bag, and they make sure, you know, they scoop it, and then they like shake it to get it, and then they're like, yeah, that's pretty good. The problem is that there's a lot of flour in this cup measure right now. Because I scooped and sort of compressed it as I took it out, this is a heavy cup of flour. Having a heavy cup of flour is gonna throw off the ratios of what I wanna have in this dough. And so the better method for getting flour out of the bag is to do as follows. First, fluff the flour a little bit. We're just going to sort of lighten it in the bag we're mixing it with a little bit of air, and it basically means that one cup of flour will have a little bit less flour in it than it might if we just compress the cup as we measure. Okay, step two. So then I dump it into the cup as opposed to pushing the cup into the flour. And then I sweep it. So I just level it off. And that is my one cup of flour. If you have cups and teaspoons, you want to use those. I showed you how to do that with the fluff, dump, sweep. Uh, if you have a scale, use that. 540 grams of flour in the bowl. And now let's get our other ingredients in there. I need a tablespoon of sugar, and I'm going to use my volumetric measure. And then two and a half teaspoons of salt. One, two, and then two and a quarter of yeast. Let's pause for just a second because water is really key, not only for the way that it hydrates flour, it's what allows everything to come together and form a dough. The other thing that water does is it affects the temperature of the dough. And as we know, bread is a fermented or leavened product. If we use really cold water, those yeasts are not happy. If we use water that's boiling, those yeasts are not gonna be happy. What we want is water that's in this sort of like Goldilocks zone of comfort. It feels good. It's slightly warm. We're cool in here today, so it almost feels like bath water. It's a soothing temperature. That's like my best sort of description that I could apply to it. So no cold water, no super hot water. Go someplace in the middle. Usually that's about, you know, around like 100 degrees, maybe a little below, maybe a little above, okay? So slightly warm. And then I'm just gonna stir to combine. So I'm just bringing this together for just a second in the bowl. So let me just pause for a second and describe what this dough feels like. So it's slightly tacky. It's a little bit sticky, not super sticky. So kneading is one way that we can develop strength in dough. And what's the point of that? The point of that is that strength is what allows our dough or our loaf to rise to its fullest potential. So how do we knead? We put a little bit of flour down and I'm gonna take this dough out of the bowl. So you can see how if the dough sticks to the bench a little bit like that, you can see how a bench scraper can be handy just to sort of clean it up. Piece of dough down, and I like to press and then turn. So I'm pressing and then turning. And this might stick a little bit, and that's okay. You're gonna see how I deal with that. So I'm pressing and turning. I'm pressing and sort of smearing a little bit, and if it sticks some, you just go in with your bench scraper, that's okay. A little bit of flour, put it back down. You're gonna watch this dough go from sort of shaggy and not terribly homogenous to something that looks smooth with a nice, pretty surface to it. So this is about three minutes in and the dough is not sticking to things. It's, it's less tacky, it has more strength. Uh, and I'm just going to continue a little bit. 
See how it almost bounces back? It's almost rubbery. I've developed that strength in that dough, so it's got that sort of aspect to it. Okay, so dough is finished with its sort of kneading, which is that process which develops strength. Uh, and now what we need to do is get some flavor in there. Right now we have good things. We have flour, water, salt, yeast, a little bit of sugar, delicious things. But fermentation, the process of rising, is actually where the flavor and aroma of bread is sort of developing. And so we need to take time for that. It takes a couple hours. Um, this recipe calls for one to two hours. And so I'm going to put just a drop of oil in a bowl. And you could use the bowl that you mixed initially in. You don't have to get a fresh bowl. And then place the dough in there. I put it in and then I turn it once just to make sure that it's sort of moist on all sides. And then, and this is important, you want to cover the bowl and you could either do that with a bowl cover like this uh, or you could use a sheet tray, you know, a baking tray, something like that. Uh, and then you want to put it in a place which is conducive to rising. And so if it's cold day, you don't want to put it outside uh, on the porch, you know? You want to put it in a place which is warm. You can put it in the oven with the light on or um, find a warm spot in your house where it can rise. The dough should feel coddled or swaddled a little bit. It should feel like it's in an ambient condition which is, you know, I would say around 72 up to 75 depending on um, where you are. Okay, so. Happy nappy, sleep well, we'll see you in one to two hours. So the dough has risen. It's been about an hour, a little bit over, in a nice comforting, warm, ambient condition. If I were to press on it, it kind of holds the impression of my finger. It feels marshmallowy almost. And that's a good term to sort of look for when we go and we're proofing the final loaf as well. And so I'm going to put just a little bit of flour down and it should just fall out real nicely. Look how beautiful that is. So just a little bit of flour on top and I'm just going to pat it to remove any large bubbles and then I'm just going to divide it into two pieces. You could use a scale and get an exact divide and you know most of the time that's what I'm into but we're keeping it easy here so I'm just going to eyeball it and just roughly get it into two pieces. And that's pretty close. That one looks a little bit small. Take a little bit from that guy, put it over there. Good. Okay. Patting gently to remove any bubbles. And then I'm going to fold it into a letter. And I'm patting to seal. That's about it. I'm going to elongate it just a little bit. Right now it's just like a little bit stubby. And so in order to elongate it, I'm going to just get some of my bench flour out of the way. If you've got too much flour on the surface, one of two things could happen. One, the, the raw flour will get incorporated into the loaf and then when you slice it you see this sort of like white streak. We don't want that. Um, the other thing is that too much flour on the bench sort of makes it sort of that it slides around too much when we're trying to shape it or roll it back and forth. And what I want to do is just elongate this slightly, just out a little bit. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to roll it back and forth with both my hands. That's literally it. We've shaped our first loaf. Done. And now I'm going to put them on a tray and we're going to let them fill with air again. That does a couple things. One, it allows them more time to gain more flavor and two, it also will help them with their sort of final size when they come out of the oven. So we're going to let them rise one more time and we're going to let them rise on this sheet tray. And I'm going to put a little bit of cornmeal down. You could also use semolina if you wanted to. So just a little bit of cornmeal. And the cornmeal is for flavor. It's for a little bit of crunch and it'll also help the loaves um, release when they're done baking. One loaf and the second loaf. And I'm trying to kind of make them roughly the same size. The reason for that is that as they bake, if they're the same size, they'll bake more evenly. So that's why I have some attention to detail in terms of the shaping and the sort of equal size of loaves. And while they're proofing, we want to, again, put them in an ambient condition which is comforting for them, which is moderately warm, 72, 75 degrees if possible, and cover them. If the skin dries out, the bread will not be as good, so cover them. A food safe plastic bag, 
a sheet of cling film, something like that, in order to keep them from drying out on the surface. Okay, we'll see you soon. Okay, so these loaves have risen a little bit. It's been 40 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. Basically what I'm looking for is for them to inflate slightly and to feel like they have lightened, like they're slightly filled with air. They're not so proofed or so sort of pumped up that when I press them, my finger holds the indentation. It's, it's popping back just a little bit. So this to me says that we're in the window. We're about where they need to be in order to bake. And so I've got my oven preheated and I'm gonna dust them with a little bit of flour and then I'm gonna score them with this knife. I'm using a serrated knife, which I think does a better job. And I'm just gonna be quick. And that's basically helping the loaf to expand in a controlled way because we know that once it goes in the oven, it's gonna grow some more, right? So cutting it is not only decorative, but it's also functional. So here are our loaves. They're well colored. They rose well in the oven. You'll see on the video that we steamed a little bit. I added a little bit of steam during the baking process, which not only helps with browning, it also helps with the quality of the crust. It's not entirely necessary. Don't worry about that. If you are new to this process and you want to sort of keep it uh, streamlined, you can bake without steam and it's just fine. So I'm excited to cut into this. We're going to give it a few minutes. Don't cut that bread as soon as it comes out. Give it a, it's still baking. It still needs time for some of the moisture that's on the interior of the loaf to migrate out. Um, it's still baking right now, even though it's not in the oven. So let it cool down at least, you know, half an hour to an hour, something like that. So for literally less than an afternoon's worth of work, we've got a delicious, beautiful loaf of bread. Love the color, love the flavor. The crumb is not super widely open. It's about what I'd expect for a dough of this hydration and consistency. It's easy, it's approachable. If you haven't made bread before, try this out. It's the easiest loaf of bread you'll ever make. If you haven't made bread, this is a great place to start. Remember the things that we discussed. Measure your ingredients as accurately as possible. Make sure to warm that water up and manage your fermentation a little bit. And then once it's proofed, go ahead and load. Bake it fully for best color and then cool it a little bit, slice it up, and enjoy this beautiful thing that can be made in the space of an afternoon. Cheers and happy baking.